This is Seven National News and in our top story. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, has launched the Thank You Guardians of the Nation campaign. This marks the January the 4th anniversary of his accession as the ruler of Dubai. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed dedicates the celebrations this year to the UAE Armed Forces and asks all individuals and organizations to share a message of thanks and support to the UAE's brave sons and daughters in recognition of their gallantry, spirit of selflessness, willingness to sacrifice, patriotism, as well as to strengthen the stability and security of the nation. Since then, residents across the country have taken to social media to share their appreciation, recognizing the UAE Armed Forces mission to stand out and adapt to the latest advancements in technology, organization, management and training. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, has also approved a 41 billion dirham 2015 budget for Dubai, an increase of 9% compared to last year. According to news agency WAM, the budget will provide 2,530 job opportunities and will continue to stimulate economic growth. It also has an operating surplus of 3.6 billion dirhams and will accentuate the social services sector. Abdul Rahman Saleh Al Saleh, the Director General of the Dubai Government's Department of Finance, was quoted as saying that the break-even point between government revenues and expenditures has come as a result of strict financial policies of the Supreme Fiscal Committee, which focused on increasing spending for the development of various sectors of the economy, infrastructure, communications, security, justice and safety, government services and excellence, and social development. Government revenues are expected to rise by 11% for the fiscal year 2015, that's compared to 2014, while revenue from government services, which represents 74% of the total government revenue, is set to increase by 22%. The net estimates of oil revenues are to account for only 4% of government revenue, decreasing by 5% from the fiscal year 2014. Wages and salaries are to represent 37% of total government spending, while general and administrative expenses, capital expenditures and grants and subsidies will account for 44%. 13% will go towards infrastructure. Abdul Rahman Akhli, the Executive Director of Budget and Planning in the Department of Finance, was also quoted as saying that the government's success in achieving a no-deficit balance for the first time since the global financial downturn is a result of applying prudent fiscal policies and that the operating surplus of 3.6 billion dirhams will contribute to the financial sustainability of the principality. Etihad Airways announced this morning that it expected to restore its normal schedule within 24 hours after severe fog disrupted flight operations on Saturday. According to a statement following a major restructuring of operations overnight, including the cancellation of 20 flights, aircraft congestion at Abu Dhabi has eased, with many disrupted services departing and delayed inbound services arriving in the UA capital. It added that in addition, the rebooking of many Etihad Airways passengers on later flights or their transfer to other airlines has helped ease the pressure on the airport, while the cancellation or deferral of flights around the network has provided more pilots and cabin crew to operate rescheduled services. It said that the main focus today is to provide flights for the passengers who are still stranded in Abu Dhabi and other ports around the network following yesterday's extraordinary disruption. Passengers who are able to defer their travel to, from or through Abu Dhabi up to and including Tuesday the 6th of January are being encouraged to rebook flights through the airline's global contact centres with the airline waiving normal cancellation and refund fees during the period. 
From today, companies that fail to issue or renew electronic labour cards for their employees will be hit with a fine of a thousand dirhams from the Ministry of Labour. However, Humaid bin Dimas Al Suwaidi, the Assistant Under Secretary of the Ministry for Labour Affairs, said that employers will be given a grace period from January the 4th to June the 30th to adjust their status. He also revealed that fines have so far reached a total amount of 2.85 billion dirhams, which will be reduced to 100 million dirhams as per the grace period given to employers for settlement. The period covers the electronic card applications not issued or renewed until the end of December. Al Suedi said that about 100,000 applications were submitted by 40,000 firms, representing 13% of the total firms registered by the ministry. He added that large fines have been reduced to only 1,000 dirhams. It is an opportunity for all employers and business owners to settle these fines and remove any sort of restrictions on their records at the ministry. The UAE Ministry of Health has announced the launch of the second phase of the National Polio Immunisation Campaign, which will offer free polio vaccines for children under the age of five across all healthcare centres in the country. At a press conference today, senior officials from the UAE Ministry of Health, together with representatives from the Dubai and Abu Dhabi health authorities, announced that the second round of the national campaign will be held from the 11th to the 22nd of January this year. During the first round, the campaign had provided the free dosage to 319,168 children across the UAE, which according to the ministry was 80% of their target. In this second phase, they aim to surpass the figures of the first round, which was held in November. According to the ministry, the campaign comes in line with the World Health Organization regulations and is a part of their supplementary immunization activities. According to the Health Ministry, although the UAE has been declared polio-free since 1992 by the World Health Organization, the additional supplementary dosage has also been tagged as an added safety measure following new cases of polio reported in 2013 and last year in some neighboring countries. According to the official from the Ministry of Health, the campaign is targeted at nationals, residents and even tourists, and it aims to increase children's immunity to the disease. The second round of the campaign will start on 11th January for two weeks. As you know, the UAE have started the first campaign in November, 16 November, had st uh, started on 16th for two weeks, and we have achieved 300 one nine thousand child from age zero till uh, five years it's not only U uh, uae uh, national but also the citizen as well as the visitor who's visited uae during that time so we uae is free from polio as we know all but due to uh, emerge of some cases of polio within the neighbor countries so we have taken the recommendation of WHO, which is World Health Organization, to increase the immunity for this age group, to protect them in case of there is any polio cases. But we assure all the member and all the citizen that UAE is free from polio. This is a health for their ch a child. If I'm a parent and I want to protect my child, I should go and give more doses for my child because it will make the, his child is safe against any disease or any polio cases. Expansion work on the Rashid Hospital's trauma centre has now reached 60% completion, according to the Dubai Health Authority. Once completed by May 2015, the 161 million dirham expansion will add 160 beds, according to the DHA's Director General, His Excellency Engineer Essa Al Maidor. He said that the expansion plan was undertaken, keeping in mind the growth of the population here in Dubai and in line with Dubai's Vision 2021. 166,000 patients were treated at the centre in 2013 
with demand almost doubling since the centre began operations in 2006, where 86,000 patients have been treated. On average, 480 and 550 patients are being treated a day at the centre, and these numbers are expected to grow in the coming years. The expansion of the trauma centre is the first phase of the Rashid Hospital master plan that was announced in May 2013. The three billion dirham master plan includes six new specialised health centres, one four-star four and another five-star hotel, villas and flats for staff accommodation, a mosque, a lakeway, landscaping and open spaces for children and families. The main hospital will be rebuilt and will have three towers with seven storeys each and will also boast 300 beds, bringing the total capacity to 900. And finally, looking to other news now, Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing, skippered by Ian Walker, bid farewell to their home port for the hazardous leg three on Saturday by leading the fleet out of the UA capital and towards their eventual destination of China from under a blanket of fog. Light winds are forecast for the first few days and this next stage of the Volvo Ocean Race is expected to take about three weeks before six boats arrive in Sanya, China. Few had banked on a thick fog for the leg departure from Abu Dhabi, where the boats had spent Christmas and New Year. Azam finished the in-port course on Friday after just under an hour of 59 minutes and 34 seconds with Dongfeng race team and Team SCA, which won yesterday's in-port race on their heels. Australian team Vestas Wind, skippered by Chris Nicholson, waved off their rivals for the 4,642 nautical mile trip to Sanya as their boat is now heading for a major repair job following their grounding on a reef in the middle of the Indian Ocean during the second leg. The Malacca Strait in the third leg is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, and at some stages it narrows to 1.5 nautical miles. <laughs> well, you have to look 24 hours ahead um, because, you know, the changes are going to start to happen, you know, kind of as we speak. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty foggy in the background. You know, hopefully that burns off and we get a, you know, a more consistent gradient uh, as we get out of here. Probably get a little bit of sea breeze. We should actually have decent conditions to the Straits of Hormuz and then no more, no more wind after that. So uh, probably a good, uh, good first 18 hours and then after that a lot of uncertainty and thus begins the uncertainty of the lake. Next 24 hours it's going to be quite light winds. Uh, a lot of VMG running around the top of the Musandam Peninsula. And then in the Gulf of Oman is again going to be very, very light, like probably no wind for 24 hours. So it's going to be a very slow start to the leg until finally we get into the northeast monsoon and we can get on our way to, uh, to Sri Lanka and beyond. So um, very tactical, lots of sailing close to the land. Um, going to be quite difficult with all the boats so close to each other. I think we've had a lovely stay here in Abu Dhabi. We've been here quite a long time, the longest stopover of the race, I'm sure. And... Um, it's the nature of this race. Well, our, our goal's been the same all race, which is to try and get in the top three. And it doesn't matter, import races, offshore races, that's, that's our goal. Um, we'd like to beat our nearest competitors, Brunel and Bonfond, uh, if we can. But, um, you know, it's a long race. Get in the top, first of all, get there safely. Secondly, try and be in the top three. And thirdly, if, if we can, beat, beat the boats closest to us overall.